Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to be talking about gouache. I received this lovely box of all the 52 new colors from Daniel Smith. God bless them for keeping me on as an ambassador. And I'm going to show them all to you. I've got them all swatched out. And I'm going to tell you what I know about the colors, show you some paintings, and then ask your input. What do you want to see me paint with? So first I'm going to give you a taste of what the swatching was like for this many colors. I was debating whether to put a chart together to see them all next to each other and I realized I wanted some separate swatch cards because my goal is to eventually get to a place where I can figure out what my go-to set is going to be of colors. But I don't know what that's going to be so I don't want to palette everything now in hopes that it, I eventually figure that out. I'm just gonna work from the tubes for a while. I wanted to swatch all the colors so I could see what they are in mass tone. So this is basically straight out of the tube. As you see, I just squeezed a little bit out onto each one of the cards. And then I took some titanium white and I wanted to see what the tints were like because there are some colors that look blackish when they start out. Like, you know, there's like colors that are supposed to be purplish like moon glow. And you only see the purplish when you start mixing it with something else. Otherwise, it looks black, which is a good thing. And I'm going to show you some comparisons of some black and non-black. As we go, I'll show you the each of the cards, talk about what I do know about the colors, if anything. And we'll dive into looking at these sketches that I've made with a couple of the colors that were of interest to me that I wanted to see what they actually paint like. So let's get started on that. All right, so for each of these paintings in my sketchbook, I picked a couple of colors to try. And the poppies, everything has titanium and white in it, but the poppies are primarily cadmium orange, cadmium red, and carmine, because I wanted to see what those would look like. A straight up red is not really the kind of warm sort of red that I want in the warm parts of the poppy. There's also some pinks and peach colors that I mix with the oranges and the two reds using the white. And then this is only the dark red, those dark spots in there, I didn't add anything to them. This is actually in the whole center, that's moon glow with white in the moon glow to make it various tints of moon glow. And then there's a whole bunch of greens out here. The colors I used for this teapot are shimmery colors. This iridescent gold, is one of them. There are a number of iridescent and duochrome kinds of colors in this collection. They do have a bit of a shimmer to them. Iridescent Aztec gold, iridescent copper, and then I combined it with Van Dyke brown. I wanted something really strong and punchy along with it. So let's look at that painting. I wanted to see if the shimmers would maintain their shimmer if I mixed them with white and if you can see that, but it didn't, it didn't maintain itself. Um, only some of it has a shimmer to it, but you can definitely see that shimmer going on, right? Can you see that? Yeah. So shimmers, if you want to keep them looking reflective, then you want to definitely uh, not mix them with anything. Next up is going to be the horse, and I picked a um, a light brown raw sienna, which is not one of the new colors, then yellow iron oxide, brown iron oxide, and raw umber. So there's no black in here in this horse. Um, he's got, you know, a couple of different colors of the brown, and then the hair on the top is a mixture of, I think, buff titanium and white, which are also not new colors, and then a mixture of greens in the background as well. And there's so many browns in the collection, I have no idea what to recommend. So if there's something specific that you're trying to paint, let me know. Uh, send me a photo of what you're trying to do, and I will see if I can figure out a color from all these swatches to match. But I am going to have them on my blog and I'll tell you about that in a second. So last one on this page is the lemons and I used Hansa Yellow Light, Indian Yellow, 
and phthalo blue for the background color. A phthalo blue is a staining pigment. The same pigment that they use for watercolor is the one that they use for gouache. They use the same binder and everything. That means that phthalo blue is going to turn your fingers blue, which it did when I cleaned out my palette. I was trying to use my finger under the sink while I was rinsing it off, and uh, my thumb was blue for a couple of days. So just be aware of that. If it's a staining color in watercolor, it's going to be a staining color here too. And there are the lemons, and I used a little bit of the blue in the corner here, but the rest of that is all Indian yellow mixed in there. There's a little bit of the blue mixed in with the yellow to make a tiny, tiny bit of greenish. So I just kind of let everything puddle on my palette, um, including the, the two yellows and then that blue. And then I used a little bit of white to do touch up here and then white for the highlight on the lemon itself. These are all phthalo blue with just different amounts of white in the pigment. So they're painted all with three colors. Now for this painting that I want to show you, I want to talk about some of these grays and blacks. So for the raccoon, I used ivory black. And so that whole column there, except for this part, is ivory black, like just the animal itself. For this section, I used Bloodstone Genuine, which looks like it's just a different, slightly different gray, but this one has a little more purplishness in it. It's not purple, but it's got purple-ishness. And Hematite is over here. That has a little more of a brown flavor to it. And then in this strip, I used Alvaro's Caliente Gray, which is a, a warm gray. Now, these could all be used as blacks in your painting. This one has, it's a little more bluishness to it compared to the others. Maybe it's a pure black, but I don't find that I like a pure black necessarily. I find it's rather a dead looking color. It's a little hard to show very subtle color shifts in video, but I'm going to try. There's a bit of a brown tone that you can see in the tree bark, and there is not any in the raccoon itself. The reason is because I use these colors, hematite, caliente, and bloodstone have more of a brownish flavor to them. And I just used straight color out of the tube, didn't do anything other than water it down a little bit. Then I added white, and each one of them turns various types of gray. So they're all tints. And that meant that everything started feeling the same by the time I was adding more and more detail. I added white in order to make some bright spots that popped forward and added more of each of those dark colors straight out of the tube to make the dark areas. And there's a real difference between the ivory black color and these others that have a little more of a warmth to them. And my final step with this painting was to add some more of the main warmer colors on top as almost a glaze like we do in watercolor, but you have to be real careful when you do that in gouache because remember you're going to be lifting up any color that's underneath and that's going to potentially make a mess. But what I did here was mix just the pigment and water, not with any other color, and I have barely any of it in the brush and I'm just lightly glazing over some of the areas in the wood to bring them more to a brown rather than necessarily trying for that, that light gray color. I mixed it a little bit thicker here so that I could get some darker warm areas. But be really careful. Tree bark is very forgiving for this. If I painted right over top of my raccoon, he would just disappear. I, it would just mush all the color. But it does really well for things like bark. And you can see the difference between the color of the bark and the color of the raccoon. I would prefer to have painted the raccoon in the bloodstone and have that warmth to him. He would look much more alive than he does. It's just a very flat color when you use black in a painting, especially in gouache. So let's breeze through these colors. I am gonna post these on my blog if you wanna take your time and look through every individual one. I would love some ideas on what you wanna see. If you wanna see how something paints out, then let me know. And in the coming weeks, I'm gonna be testing some watercolor and gouache colors in some paintings and uh, would love your suggestions on what you'd want to see more of. So we've got Wisteria, very pretty purple. 
Quin purple, which goes all the way from mass tone being very dark to getting a very, very light when you add a tint of white to it. You can add other colors to these. I only added white. I didn't want to swatch out the whole universe. So there you go. Carbazole violet is almost black. You could use it as a black if carbazole violet is the color that you want in your palette. Duochrome mauve, mauve, however you pronounce that. It has a small amount of shimmer, not a ton, but it, you know, a little bit. So that's nice. Permanent green light is not one of the new colors, but it is one of the greens. And notice I've broken them into color groups now. Olive green, which has a very good dark to it, but it's not a blackish dark. Cascade green, same thing. Um, not a new one, but it has a pretty decent darkness to it. Sap green was interesting because I'm used to using sap green in watercolor with a lot of water and it washes out to a very beautiful color. And especially when I mix it with a dollop of yellow or a dollop of a blue, I can get all kinds of greens with it. It's like practically black-ish, I guess, not completely blackish like the Carbazole, but it's very, very dark, which is really helpful when you're looking for a dark and you don't want to use black. Thalo green blue shade is very turquoisey, but you wouldn't know that if all you saw was that chunk. But look how much adding just a tiny bit of white to it will lighten it and make it more of a turquoise color. So now the pearlescent and iridescent colors. This one is pearlescent white. And when you paint with it, it doesn't paint like you're painting with white that happens to be shimmery. So your titanium white is going to be whiter than this. But when you like it, look at it at an angle, you're going to see that shimmer. Iridescent electric blue has a small amount of shimmer. It's not as shimmery as a lot of the other colors, but there's a little bit to it. It's a beautiful blue, though. I do like it. Iridescent moonstone is a semi-ish shimmery gray. It's not like a shiny, shiny silver, but it's got some reflectivity. Iridescent Sunstone is quite nice. So now we're on the blues. Cobalt Teal Blue you might be familiar with as a watercolor, that it's a highly, highly, highly granulating pigment. But in gouache, you don't get any granulation. I haven't tested to see if you wash that out. Is it also going to granulate? Or if that's just in watercolor, I'll have to test. And we have lavender, which I put in the blues because it didn't feel all that purplish, but it kind of stra straddles the two. King's Royal Blue, which I love in watercolor, but I mentioned in my previous video when I talked about uh, a couple other colors, this was an alternate for me in watercolor, and I couldn't get it to stay nice and smooth. I couldn't get a smooth wash with it, but I get to use it in gouache. There's cerulean blue and cerulean blue chromium. So they're two a bit different colors. And you can even see they turn different types of blues when you add white to them. So the chromium is darker. And this one doesn't end up as bluish. It's softer, but this one has a little more of a, a punch to it in terms of the blue. Next, we have ultramarine blue, which is not a new color. Cobalt blue, not a new color but this is a good comparison of the two side by side. And then phthalo blue turquoise. Again, this is a staining color. Phthalo blue is always stained, so watch your fingers, but it is a really pretty color. Prussian blue can even be a sky blue. Like you can use some of these really, you know, supposedly dark blues as a sky blue, but these would actually be decent in some paintings as a black in Danthrone and Prussian because they've got a really nice dark to them. So now for the yellows, lemon yellow. We've got cadmium yellow light hue. Hansa yellow medium, not a new one. Uh, cadmium yellow hue. Chrome titanate yellow, which is also a new watercolor, new-ish watercolor, maybe the last couple of years. Hansa yellow deep, again, not a new one but a pretty color, very close to my favorite color, and yellow ochre. Then we get into the oranges. We have pyrrole orange, and then there was the cadmium orange. These are the only two orange oranges. This is the one I used for the poppy. 
So there's only two oranges in the whole collection. Now we're on to opera pink. Opera pink is a color that is fugitive. Remember that it disappears when it's out in the light. I haven't tested this, of course, but one of the things I didn't like about it right away is that I didn't get a very smooth paint out on it. And I noticed when Daniel Smith had the paint out, theirs also was not smooth. So it's kind of a weird pigment in that way. I'm going to do some tests with it and see if you mix it with just a tiny bit of white. Can you get that to punch up and smooth out more? I'm not really sure, but stay tuned for that. I'll also do some light tests with it. Pyrrole Scarlet and Pyrrole Red were the first two reds that they came out with. And the way that you can see the difference, there's one that's darker than the other, but you can also tell the type of pink. This has more of a peachy feel to it. That has more of a purpley feel. And then we've got Cadmium Red to add to that trio. And they're all, they'll all do about the same, I would think. You know, if you're interested in getting reds, they're all pretty close to each other but they do make different kinds of light pinks. There's permanent alizarin crimson versus alizarin, and that means one is permanent and more light fast than the other, just so you know. But there are people who are sticklers for wanting the original alizarin crimson. I put Quinn magenta in here. It could be in with the purples, because look how purpley that is. But I put it in with the reds since it looks kind of pinkish there. Bordeaux, again, could be with the purples because it's got a purpley flavor here. But with this dark color, it looks like a dark red too. And then there's that carmine that I used on the poppy as well. Then we've got a couple of kind of dull reds. There's Venetian red, Indian red, and then we get into the burnt sienna. So you can see how those compare. The burnt sienna has a little more orangey feel to it but these others are a little more on the red side. So now we're getting into the browns. There's burnt sienna, red iron oxide, burnt umber, which is not new. Piemontite Genuine. This color, I painted a bird with it. I can't find it right now, but the bird itself had some really darks and I used this as a black and then I used this for the gray. So I got this kind of purplish tone to it, which was quite nice, kind of interesting. And we have sepia, which again works as a, a black if you want to. And then you can lighten it until it looks almost grayish, but it still has that brown flavor to it. So Jane's gray is a color that is almost like a Payne's blue gray-ish. It's got a more blue tone to it. When you add white, you'll get a, a light gray color, but this almost works as a black if you're looking for a black with a bluish flavor. Uh, same kind of thing with Payne's Gray. You can see there's a slight difference. This one's a little bit lighter. Um, I'm not sure if one is bluer than the other. Maybe that one's a little bit more blue. I don't know. I can't tell from that. Then we have Alvaro's Fresco Gray. Alvaro uh, Castanet has a cool and a warm gray, just Fresco and Caliente. Lamp Black, which is the black they had originally. Jane's Black with the blue orange and the red green. The you know grays do come out a little bit different, but most people are probably not going to need a whole lot of these blacks. If you're going to have some of them, fine, but you don't need all of them. Neutral Tint, and you can see how that lightens with the white. And then I threw Moon Glow back here. It, it didn't end up in the purple somehow but you get a very, very blackish color. And then you can mix that with white to get more of a purple color. And then buff titanium didn't seem to belong anywhere. So I put it just by itself. And these swatch cards are all gonna be pictured over on my blog. So if you need to go check them out and see what colors might fit your palette, that would be great. Also, if you have colors in here, you're thinking, maybe I want this one, maybe I don't, don't want that one, maybe I want this other one, let me know because I'm going to be painting for the next couple of weeks because I'm tired of swatching. Between my new watercolor palette and all of this gouache, I just want to paint. So let me know what colors you would like to see. And if you're a watercolorist and want to weigh in on the watercolor video, I will link that one here at the end as well. You can just tell me what colors I should use and I shall start painting. 
I will see you again in my next video. If you haven't subscribed, please, what are you waiting for? Hit the like button and I will see you in a couple of days. Bye-bye. <laughs>